Hello AP students, this is Mrs. Politsky and I have your notes for Chapter 14, Social Psychology, Other Topics in Social Psychology. Group Dynamics, this is a study of how groups form and interact. Social facilitation, this is an increase in an individual's performance because of being in a group. This occurs when an individual's performance improves because of being in a group. An example, Research has shown that people who work in small groups in class learn more and are more productive than those who work alone. As a part of a group, an individual can compare their thoughts and ideas with others in the group, and those comparisons can be used to make improvements. There is also something known as social loafing. This is a decrease in performance because of being in a group. This occurs because the group is too large or because the people do not think that their contributions will, to the group will be valued. De-individualization. Uh, this occurs when group members lose their sense of personal identity and responsibility, and the group assumes responsibility for their behavior. Examples of this occur in situations where fans storm the field at soccer games or loot or riot to protest or cheer victories. People join groups to accomplish goals, enhancing self-esteem, developing social identity, or expanding our social network. Groups generally characterize three features, roles, norms, and cohesiveness. Roles are an expected set of behaviors for members of the group. Norms are the rules of conduct within the group, and cohesiveness is the force that pulls the group members, perhaps maybe together. Um, your next item, group polarization. Uh, this is when individuals in a group have similar, though not identical views. Their opinions become more extreme. Group think, as we have talked about earlier, is an excessive tendency to seek concurrence among group members. This occurs when members of a group are highly cohesive and strive for concurrence among the members. In other words, no one wants to descend. Psychology in our lives, loving relationships. There are many kinds of love. Romantic love, this is a temporary and highly emotional condition based on infatuation and sexual desire. The American assumption that romantic love is the basis for long-term intimate commitment is not universal. Uh, Robert Sternberg, who we have talked about earlier, um, proposed what is known as the triangular theory of love. This is back in two, or 1998. This theory describes various kinds of love in terms of com three components. Passion, which is kind of the erotic attraction. Intimacy, the sharing of feeling, or feelings and confidences. And commitment, the dedication uh, to putting this relationship first in one's life. So romantic love is high on passion and intimacy, but low on commitment. Liking and friendship are characterized by intimacy, but not by passion and commitment. Infatuation is a high level of passion, but it has not developed into intimacy or committed relationship. Complete love or consummate love basically is all three, passion, intimacy, and commitment. If current rates hold, approximately half of all today's marriages and up to about 60% of all second marriages will end up in divorce. We now know, for example, that for a relationship to stay healthy and thrive, both partners must see it as rewarding and equitable. Both partners must feel that they are getting something out of the relationship and not just giving. And the rewards of the relationship can involve many things, including adventure, status, laughter, mental stimulation, material goods, as well as nurturance, love, and social support. For a relationship to thrive, communication between the partners must be open, ongoing, and mutually validating. Lasting relationships have five or more positive interactions than negative ones, including exchanges of smiles, loving touches, laughter, and compliments. Partners must know how to deal with conflicts effectively. 
Conflicts must be faced early and resolved fairly and effectively. Each partner must take responsibility for his or her, or her own identity, self-esteem, and commitment to the relationship, rather than expecting the partner to engage in mind reading or self-sacrifice. Thank you very much.